Now keep in mind, the only other mirrorless camera that I shot a wedding with was the Sony A9, but I also own a Panasonic JD5, so I'm aware of how they work as well. So even though I own and shoot Nikon, I'm well aware of what the other companies are capable of and what works and what doesn't. So just keep that in mind as I kind of explain what's going on. Now in this first situation, I am approaching the Nikon Z the same way I did with the Sony A9, the A7R3 slash A7 III system. The Sony system really shines when you take advantage of its continuous focusing features like zone focusing, you know, along with face tracking and eye auto focus and things like that. Okay, now at first I started in auto area AF mode. And in auto area AF mode, uh, the Nikon does a pretty decent job of recognizing faces in the frame. And when it sees several faces, it allows you to choose which face you want to prioritize, which I think is really cool. If it doesn't recognize a face, then it'll just go back to auto area where it'll try to guess what you want to focus on. And that can be hit or miss depending on the situation. <laughs> There were a few times where the camera would lock onto a face and then I would shoot thinking it was in focus, but it wasn't. But then there were times when it locked on and I shot it and it was in perfect focus. So the guessing game of whether or not the face tracking got it right was a little annoying in this situation to be honest. Um, so instead I switched to using single point autofocus and directed the focus where I wanted to go which much more consistent results. Now another reason I switched to single point autofocus was to have more control of where the camera was going to focus. One of the updates that I hope Nikon incorporates in the future of its focusing system is the ability to um, use like the face tracking feature or some kind of button to activate face tracking in tandem with using like single point focusing or some different uh, auto focusing mode. Now what I mean by that is in some cases when I was using auto area trying to use face tracking it wouldn't recognize the correct face or it wouldn't recognize a face at all and so I had to switch to single point focus to get it to focus in the right area whereas um, let's say you're using single point focusing and you're like focusing on like a detail like let's say I want to focus on the details on the table or something and then my groom or somebody walks into the frame and I want to focus on their face as opposed to having to move the focus point up to their face it would be nice if there was some kind of button where the camera recognized the face kind of like how Sony does with autofocus where like if you're in single point focusing if somebody's face or some, a, a person walks into a frame you can hit a button that maps to autofocus slash face tracking and it'll try it to activate the face tracking and, and it works most of the time um, I just think that something like that would be more efficient for event photography and wedding photography for people who go between shooting details to shooting people back to shooting details to people having the camera recognize faces and then be able to lock onto the face when you need to but then go back to single point would be a great help so yeah hopefully not kind of incorporates something like that also after dan's wedding i return zero of my caffeine started i return the time. if you don't get charged then Remember when we got the same tuxedo for three weeks? Yeah. So, no, we're not putting the. Yes. Right. No, no, 
point because the jacket comes off. No, the shirt. Oh, your shirt. Now, as far as low light focusing goes, um, during cocktail hour, I didn't really have too much of an issue with the focusing. Like, it found focus, you know, fast enough, and it was pretty adequate. And again, I stuck to single point focus so I could have, a, you know, a bit more control over where the camera focused. And you know, like again, I didn't really have too much of an issue. Everything worked out just fine, as you can see. Can I get a picture of you all together? Ready, one, two, one more. Got it, thank you. Perfect.
Okay, so later on in the wedding, I switched to auto area wide focusing mode, which gives it like a bigger box to focus on. I figured if I switched to a bigger selection of focusing area, it would maybe focus, you know, quick, quicker. It would quiet focus a bit faster and, you know, lock on. Now, my biggest issue with that particular mode is it kind of works like a zone focusing, which is great. Like zone focusing in the Sony system and even in the Panasonic system is like a genius feature. My issue with the the way Nikon does it is I can't really tell what it's focusing on until I actually you know hit the shutter. So what I mean by that is with the Sony system, when you use zone focusing, it'll acquire focus and you'll see that what the little dots are focusing on. So I can tell if I'm focusing on like somebody's hand or their shoulder or their face or whatever but with this it just gives me like a, a big green dot so i can't really tell if i'm focusing like on their face or on their body you know what i mean like it just it would be better if i could actually see where the dots were acquiring focus in that particular box so i could you know be more confident in what i'm focusing on as opposed to just hoping that that box gets it where i wanted to get it so yeah Okay, so my goal with this wedding was to stress test the Z7 in a way to see what it really was capable of instead of listening to all of the extreme bias or hype with people either over praising or over criticizing the camera. I use it alongside my trusty Nikon D750 and most of the time I prefer to use the Z7. The only time I really wanted to reach for the D750 was in the extreme low light conditions of the reception. And that was mainly because I know exactly how to get that camera to perform when I needed to in those tight situations. The, C, the, Z, the D750 was like a fail safe for me. Um, but as you can see from these photos, the Z7 didn't stop me from getting great shots and the image quality from that camera along with the S-Line lenses are amazing. Really Nikon all, well, really all Nikon has to do is tweak the focusing algorithm and add a few more features via firmware over time. And I think that the Z7 will be a complete winner in my opinion. I mean, Panasonic just released a new firmware version 2.4 for the GH5, and that camera performs even better than when it came out back in March of 2017. Same with Fuji and their APS-C cameras. They've been good about you know providing updates for their system to have their cameras perform better and better every time. While meanwhile, Sony will just kind of come out with a whole new camera. But you know, that's not that bad either, depending on like what the last camera was. But anyways, my point is if Nikon follows suit by either providing updates with firmware or just releasing a new better body uh, like Sony does, then this system will be a real contender for the top spot in my opinion. They already did it with the Nikon D850 in the DSLR world, so there's no reason why they can't do the same thing in the mirrorless wars as well. So. Anyways, if you made it this far, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if so, please leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down if the video helped you or disappointed you or whatever. If you have any other questions about my experience, please leave them below. I also put links to any of the gear I use in the description. Uh, you know, affiliate links and the money that I make from this channel allow me to rent gear and actually use it in a real world working environment as opposed to me just sitting behind a table, you know, and talking specs and talking about stuff that and instead I can actually go out and use it and tell you how it really works and show you. Like I pride myself on actually showing you exactly how I get the results that I got and how the camera performs. So whether it's a Sony or a Canon or a Fuji or whatever I use, you know, I want to be kind of as um, unbiased as I can be and just, you know, giving you the facts and letting you make the decision for yourself about how you feel about the camera. And you know, with that being said, I want to spend a special shout out to all of my subscribers that donate to my live streams and support the channel. You know, people like James Parrish, Carl Jones, I'm the Brown, Maxim, Stan the Man, Bryce, Killer K, Sean, Adam, uh, Sean Adams. And for the rest of you, you, if I miss your name, I'm sorry, but you know I appreciate you guys. But really, I thank you guys for your support. And uh, yeah, again, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know below and uh, peace out.